thank you, Wim, for uh, the nice introduction. Um, I'm looking as much as forward as all of you wearing the cowboy hat, so uh, let's get cracking and let's get it fast. So, um, I'm going to talk about uh, yeah, a modular class beam system we developed uh, at Ghent University during my PhD. And uh, basically, it's all based on safety and having large scale structural beams to like carry roofs of a large scale or facades or uh, even office floors. So typically the concept we are using and which I uh, well, um, studied during my PhD is a reinforced glass beam. So these are like the two setups we always uh, tested. So we have solid reinforcement on top and bottom in a triple layered laminate of annealed fluid glass. Um, in this case, uh, and yeah, for all the test specimens, um, laminated together with sentry glass. Hmm. So this is like a bit a nostalgic um, slide for me. It's like um, almost uh, a summary of my four years of uh, just breaking glass beams. Yeah, it was quite a fun PhD. So what we want to do with the reinforced glass beams, we looked into systems, so multi-span systems, and what are all the mechanisms of safety we can uh, have in such beams, like, and really looking like the concept of reinforced concrete, concrete beams, concrete plates. So what we have is, we look at ductility, we look at post-fracture capacity, we look at load or stress redistribution yeah, through uh, hinge formation, and finally, at the end, uh, we look into we, or we have looked into membrane action. So basically, what you see on this picture is uh, a beam tested in membrane action. Hmm? So, but before we get there, I'm going to start saying like, what is how is the real behavior of, of a multi-span beam? Hmm? So, a multi-span beam is uh, behaving like this. So, where you see the round circle, you have a glass fracture, and all the rest. After uh, that phase is the post-fracture phase, uh, where safety is important. So here you can see that we have ductility, uh, we, can have, we can make it very significant, and we can have a very high post-fracture load if you want it. Uh. Then we can go even further and look into mem uh, redistribution of stresses and loads, like you see here. So here is a plot of uh, the bending moment versus the deflection. And like you see on the top, where the sagging moments are, you can see like the, the, the lower curve is a curve of a, not a multi-span system, but just one span. Hmm? And the other two curves are the multi-span system. You can see we have, thanks to multiple hinges that are forming instead of one, we can have redistribution of the moment and we can have an extra capacity. So it's a more efficient system when you go multi-span, just like you would have in reinforced concrete. And then finally, we looked into membrane action. So what you see here, the black curve, the lower curve, is the one without membrane action. So we don't uh, laterally restrain uh, the beam at the ends, but we just keep them like hinged. And the red curve you see, those are with laterally restraints. So here you can see we can like really get uh, compressive membrane action to a pretty high level. And then it, it just goes on until, uh, well, until the tensile reinforcement takes over and we really have a catenary action and we can go to very high loads over there. So there's a lot of safety um, in, in those systems inherently, um, a lot of redundancy. So then you come to, again, how this beam looks like. And this is how such a test uh, went on. So normally, ah, yeah, it's okay, I think, yeah. So this is like a four-point bending test where we just lately restrain the ends. So you can see it's like just fracturing. This, yeah, of course, this test uh, took like two hours uh, to, to have it static. So here it's, it's going quite fast. But now you see like how you have fracture at the ends and in the entire span, here we had to take over um, the hydraulic jack to on further so you see it going catenary action and basically yeah wrecking the beam let's say but as you see the 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 final shape is like a, a, almost a theoretical shape what you see if you have a catenary line with the four-point bending test so and um, 
Yeah, that's how those beams were tested, and like you saw, the capacity can go very high. But, of course, we know those beams, they are working quite well, huh? so let's look into the practical stuff. There's always a limit to your glass size. And okay, we have huge autoclaves, we can go very long, but still, there is the limit. And we should also look into transporting the stuff, and also into the on-site handling. The bigger the elements, the, the more hazardous it is. And yeah, for transport, it's, it's always harder, of course. So we looked into a solution for that to, have, to, to get these problems solved. So like me, myself, uh, I like cycling. So if you can look at, at, at the bike, uh, you have the chain of the bike, uh, which is basically a system that of all shackles who are connected together in the longitudinal array. So basically we thought about why not trying to have a modular glass beam system and working like that so we can have modules, put them on site, connect them on site and uh, then you get um, well a pretty efficient system which you can standard produce with standard lengths, standard costs, uh, transport is not that an issue and on-site handling looks uh, a little bit less hazardous. Now, if we want to look into that, we have to look into the connections, of course. And for the connections, we looked into structural safety, uh, transparency, and visual continuity. Because, uh, of course, the structural safety should be there. Um, otherwise, it's not, um, it's not good that we use uh, such beams, uh, let's say, with, with the reinforcement. So we, have, we need to continue that safety in the system. And, of course, uh, yeah. It's all about aesthetics in glass, so transparency and visual continuity is very important. And basically, this is what we came up to, and this is how the system really looks like. So this is like a connected beam. You can see a little bit the, the vertical lines. And the technique we used is, uh, yeah, we used like a combined technique of gluing, segmenting, and also uh, connecting the reinforcement. Um, so uh, yeah, which is now. Under a, under a patent um, and um, is uh, getting, uh, has been tested at the end of the PhD, let's say. So does it really work? You know, let's go testing and let's go break the beams. Let's do what we are good at. So this was a, a picture of the testing rig. Um, so basically uh, you have in blue the entire frame to keep the loads. In green you have the jack and then you have the loading beam. So typically we use two spans. So we have like a multi-span system. And so schematically, it looks like this. Yeah, so two spans of one meter and a half, let's say. Um, two point loads, um, yeah, just multi-span, not that hard. Mm -hmm. And these were the results. So basically, we have, again, initial fracture, where you see the circle. And we have, again, our ductile face, and our loads can go up. And. Um, here we used, yeah, this is for the low reinforcement percentage, so it's a bit like this beam. This is like a, a module I saw out of, of the beam after testing. Yeah. So basically what you see, uh, you see the section, this is the hollow reinforced one. So this is uh, this um, load carrying behavior. So what you really see, we had glass fracture. This was the point load. And we go up, we have ductility, we, we can turn on the load yeah, almost until 36, 37 kilonewtons, and then we had reinforcement fractures. So we really had here a plastic hinge, and if you could look from close, or if you had done at my booth uh, somewhere, you could see like here that the reinforcement really stretched out and just ruptured. But like you see on this, uh, on this curve, we have even a re um, another redundant phase which actually is, it was only at one spot broken, but as the system is still a multi-span system, the loads were just redistributed again, and basically every beam only failed when we had two reinforcement ruptures, uh, so at the central support or in the spans. Mm. So, but even that second phase with this reinforcement percentage, of course, is even above the load fracture uh, or the fracture load of glass. Mm. So this is how the beams looked like. You see the top beam there, he was just like uh, broken in the middle like that, yeah, but you still had the two spans working. So the right span of that beam also um, failed due to reinforcement fracture. And yeah, you have a same uh, system like in the middle. What is really um, 
special about this is that you see you have huge glass fractures in the spans, but not at the center. And that's where the connection region was. You can like almost like really separate it by the two vertical lines and you, do, you only have like a very local glass fracture over there. And ex actually that's the effect of the interlayer we used. So the, the two spans are sentry glass modules, uh, prefabricated, and then like let's say here in the lab but or, or on site, we like really like uh, used another interlayer material, um, cast resin in this case, which was less stiff than the interlayer, and that's what you see. So basically, the system already was redistributing the loads even before glass fracture was going on. So this is then uh, the results for um, the solid reinforcement. So just like the same size of this, but the entire section is filled, eh? so not a hollow section. And there we see after fracture that we can get really high levels, but at that zone we don't have like the real long um, plastic plateau, and that was because the resin we used was too weak, actually, to, um, to further um, transfer the loads and to make the reinforcement yield. So there we had like bonding failure. But still, of course, you have that post-fracture capacity, which is more than double uh, the glass fracture load. So it's, uh, very, well, it's very safe, actually. So this is how these beams looked like. So the top one really illustrated um, bonding failure of the reinforcement. The bottom one you can see uh, less good, but um, that was an on the left span actually, and then you had like uh, just like uh, compressive failure uh, of the glass zone. Now, great, we had quite good results, but how, how does the system really r relate to uh, a system where we don't have that connection, just a continuous beam? So we made a comparison. So here you see for the hollow reinforced percentage, so low reinforcement percentage, it's almost quite the same. The only difference you see is it's going a little bit lower uh, than, than the, the continuous one. So the blue ones are the connected beams. And like you see, um, the load is a little bit lower. And again, we can, if you look into the bending moment of that, we see that at the hogging moment, so where the connection is at the central support, there you see, due to the lower stiffness of our resin, we have redistribution to the spans. But of course, there is some weakness and therefore the load is a little bit lower. The same we can say about um, the solid or the high reinforcement percentage. So over there, Cedric Glass was able just to keep, um, to make the reinforcement yield. Eh? So we had enough stiffness and enough shear strength of the interlayer. And again, our cost resin did not. Eh? But we see the same effect again when you look at the bending moments. So going to conclusions. We have developed an innovative module glass beam system, which is quite max. Well, we maximize the transparency and for sure the visual continuity uh, of the beam. We don't use any steel plates, we don't use any bolts, we don't, we don't have to drill holes. Um, and basically, we can, we can uh, apply annealed float glass and not tempered. We have significant structural safety, we have the post fracture capacity, there is significant ductility in the system, and we can even trigger load redistribution. And of course, the governing factors here are the stiffness and the strength of the cast resin or the adhesive we would use um, to make that connection. Now, we are still climbing. It's, uh, the concept is almost there, eh? but we want to make it still more efficient and let's see like, if you can really like, optimize the entire system. So what we basically are now doing as future work is looking into adhesives and more suitable properties. Um, and yeah, stiffness is, is, is key here actually. So like if you can, or, and shear string of course. So like yeah, we are really looking into adhesives with, with m even more suitable properties so we can have an optimal behavior. Then, of course, we need still to cope with the on-site environment. So now we have done it in the lab, which is quite okay. Of course, the plan is to really make the modules, bring them to on the site and do the stuff on site, the connecting. So there, we still need to think about uh, how are we going to do that? How are we um, coping with, with yeah, the dust and the, the hazards of not having the best clean environment? Hmm? And then last, we really want to look into automa automatization um, of the methodology. Uh, so like really 
as fast as possible, as efficient as possible, uh, using using even my, maybe small scale robots to just to, to make the connection on site and to do it modular and fast. Now, after this work, we also had some fun, of course. So what we did, uh, we built a, a mock-up. So it's like a glass office floor mock-up. It's uh, not that big, it's only two meters on one. 0.3 meters uh, with, with two glass beams, uh, with, with the modular glass beam system having two spans and connecting them in the center. So basically, well, it's very, it's very handy to, to drive it around to, to stuff to show to the people. And of course, they can test it. So you can see a lot of tests uh, going on here. At, at the bottom picture, you also see our team uh, at Ghent University. Um, so yeah. We have tested it, it's, it's quite successful and um, it's, it's really promising. Eventually, if you can really go into uh, the last phase and really get it um, solved uh, with, well, it, it is solved, but let's optimize it uh, for the adhesive and the on-site um, problems, then uh, I think uh, it's a concept that is really ready to, to boost it on the market. Um, and let's, let's try or let's hope that, that we can really have like large-scale spans, large-scale roofs, large-scale facades, which are safe, uh, which are safe. We don't need to have fins that we double the glass uh, just because one fin should break, you have the other one. No, let's keep it at one fin and just let, uh, let, let us optimize the material and let us really um, use it to the fullest of its potential. So I really thank you and, uh, well, we'll be very glad to talk to you at the party. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Before we go uh, to the party, there's actually the opportunity and the final opportunity to ask questions if there are any. Any brave soul out there? There is a brave soul out there. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Have you explored um, what would happen as you scale this fin up, in this beam up in, in yeah. depth and we, um, how, well, the, how this, because you, you've got a great package of performance there and, mm -hmm. and the ductility, does, it, does that, gonna, is that going to stay in the same kind of proportions as you, as you scale it up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, have been, uh, there has been done some testing, uh, not on the multi-span beams, but uh, one-span beams, like bigger ones. Uh, also at the U Delft, some tests were done uh, by Christian Lothar. Um, and, and there we have really seen that the, the effect remains the same. So there's no issue with scaling. Actually, you could even like really scale uh, the, the numbers. So it's sometimes it's, it's quite easy <laughs> and simple. Um, and on the other hand, of course, we, we um, during the PhD, we made a numerical model for it, uh, modeling the glass fracture. We made analytical models. So there we did parameter studies. We, we went into uh, the whole uh, shebang of it, let's say, and uh, well, we, we have seen that it's, uh, well, we can really tune the concept. Like you can really say like, okay, we have that glass fracture load for design. And according to the importance of the building, let's say, you can say like, oh, we want that safety level. Say like 1.3 times your glass fracture load. Well, we can really design our composite section with the reinforcement in it and say like, okay, we want that load level. And we can really like tune it uh, like that. Yeah. Any, any other questions at this point? There are. So, well, first, thanks. It was a really, really nice presentation. Uh, I have just one question regarding the adhesive, because you're still researching it. Um, but which kind of adhesive did you use? And do you have any ideas what adhesive would suit for the application at the current status? Yeah. There's no or further re mm -hmm. more research. So, so what we used is a, is a cast resin. Uh, it's called UV-Col. Uh, you know it. I don't know if uh, well, it's, uh, the, it was produced by Olmix. So um, yeah, and it has um, well, let's say if you have sentry glass, you, you have you load it, like say for a quarter uh, at that temperature, 23 degrees. You're going to have a realistic um, modulus of around 120, like that. Uh, or 110, so uh, the uvicle was like 47 to 50. Uh, so that's what you saw were the effects of, of having a lower stiffness. So what is really important there is basically having the stiffness uh, at best would be the same, 
or maybe even a little bit higher. Yeah? So, so you can play with that actually and say like, okay, I want my, my hugging or my bending, uh, my sagging uh, zones to fail first or not. So you, you can play in that design. Um, but yeah, what, what I would like to see is really have an adhesive that has at least the stiffness of the interlayer. Um, and in that regard, of course, the shear strength. Because yeah, yeah, if you don't have the shear strength, then you, know, you have bond failure and then, uh, yeah. And then the concept is fucked. <laughs> but uh, okay. Final question here from the back. It's great work. Um, you're using annealed glass here, and if you have beams which have significant dead load in them, do you feel comfortable using, say, heat strengthened glass as a similar concept to avoid static fatigue? Or would you say, I just really want to keep that significant reserve capacity and I just want to have a super low stress in it. Yeah, there has been done some testing on, on the glass types and uh, a nil flow glass here is especially good because of the fracture pattern. We have large shards and the large shards, we can use them to have compressive, uh, in, uh, compressive forces in it. There has been done a test on a tempered beam and actually the entire effect is gone because of like the very small particles and there's really no, yeah, no action in it. So, so basically I, I would always go for the, annealed, uh, for the annealed type and just, but what we also thought about and we, which, should, which we should test too is like a combination. So maybe like a combination of like, when we, we have a laminate, uh, let's say three layers, we can like have a combination between the heat strength and, and float or whatever. But basically, I would stick to the float. It's cost effective. It's good for the, for the visual uh, properties. And, and basically, technically and mechanically, it works best for this concept. So, uh. Uh, curious about which grade of stainless you used and whether you needed to prime it. Um, uh, this, this was uh, AI SI304. So uh, yeah, it's quite um, normal stainless steel, I would say. Uh, so, um, but yeah, basically, uh, I think uh, any kind of steel can be used. But of course, stainless steel is very handy uh, for corrosion effects and so on. Yeah. Let's thank Kenny one more time. <laughs> thank you. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why don't you like the video? Drop us a comment below and share the video as well since GPD is all about sharing and to receive more videos in future subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click the bell icon ciao